Have you ever been afraid to speak your mind because the person listening might not agree with you? To me, yes. I was afraid that they would insult me or make some kind of bad joke, but I realized that fear is useless. My name is Abraham Lincoln, and throughout my life I have striven to stand up for what is right. The road was not easy. Sometimes they threatened me and I had to fight a war in my own country, the United States of America, but I never stopped fighting for what I thought was good. The most beautiful thing is that many people have come to think the same way as me. I was born in the winter of 1809, in a little log house in the village of Kentucky, in the United States of America. When I say small, I mean very small. Your room is definitely bigger. My parents were farmers and they didn't have money for a big and nice house. But I didn't care. On all the farms where I lived I lived happily. They were surrounded by spectacular scenery and lovely streams where you could swim in the summer to cool off. I liked animals the most. They became my true passion. Around the farms there were usually bears, deer, bison. They were wonderful animals. I felt very bad when my father hunted them. I didn't understand why we had to kill them. Abe, don't make any noise, you'll scare the deer and we'll run out of dinner. Dad, can't we eat something else? They are so beautiful. My other great passion was reading. I could spend hours under the crown of a tree with a book in hand. But I was a bit slow. I had only gone to school for one year and had only learned the alphabet, so it was a bit difficult for me. However, I wouldn't put the book down until I learned it by heart. I was fascinated by adventure stories, like Robinson Crusoe, and my favorite book told the life of George Washington, the first president of the United States. I liked it so much that I transcribed fragments of it on the bark of trees. Abe, help your father on the farm. Now I can't, mother, I write. But we don't even have paper. But we have trees. One day, one of my friends came to ask for my help. He told me that some boys were mistreating a turtle. They had put a hot stone on its shell to make it go faster. When I saw the scene with my own eyes, I got very angry. Take that rock off her and let her go. What's up, Abe? Look how he runs with the stone. It moves much faster than the other turtles. You're hurting him, don't you understand? Stop it. I didn't enjoy facing those guys. They told me more and more, but finally they let me take the turtle to a pond. That day I promised myself that I would never allow acts of injustice, neither towards animals nor towards people. Since then, the sense of justice has always accompanied me, and I have never turned my back on it. That's how I started to be known in my village. When someone had a problem or an argument with a friend or coworker, they would come to me for advice. More than once I was asked for my opinion even in court. I loved helping people so much that I decided to study law and become a lawyer. That way I could have defended all those who needed help. Mr. Lincoln, are you busy on Wednesday? I have appointments until next month. How long will I have to wait? I will try to make time for you, but the list is very long. However, no one had asked my opinion on a very serious matter. At that time, in my country, blacks and Indians did not live in freedom. The whites considered themselves superior beings and thought they could do whatever they wanted with them. Buy them, sell them, put them to work without giving them anything in return. The situation was absolutely unfair. No one could be someone's master, nor could he buy or sell him. The northern states of the United States of America did not agree with slavery and prohibited it, but in the south it continued to be legal. Many slaves were mistreated daily by their masters and deprived of their freedom. I remember one day when, returning from a client, I saw a barge filled with dozens of Negroes, men, women and children. They were dressed in rags and crammed on deck like sardines. On top of that they also had handcuffs. They are cold, why are you transporting them like this? Where are they going? Don't worry, they're just slaves. All men are equal, and yet those were freckled because of the color of their skin. Something had to be done. Ending slavery then became my main goal. Naturally, it was not a simple case that I could solve as a lawyer. It was a very important topic that concerned a lot of people. In fact, it looked at the whole country. There was only one way to succeed. I had to become the President of the United States. 
Fortunately, there were many who thought like me. When I announced my candidacy, I had a lot of people on my side, and that gave me strength, even if I was also threatened. I often received letters directly at home, and my wife was scared. Abraham, I'm afraid. Me too, my dear. And what are you going to do, to say even louder, all will be free. It took me several years, but I finally succeeded. In 1861 I became the president of my country. A few days after my election as president, things started to go very badly. Regions that supported slavery did not want to free their slaves. On April 12, 1861, they bombarded the northern states and declared war. The country was divided in enmity. Those from the other army are willing to do anything, Mr. President. Yes, but we are right, do you think we can win, I think we have to try. Those who deny the freedom of others do not deserve their own. The war did not start well for us. We lost many battles and meanwhile thousands of black people continued to be slaves. But I was president and I had to do something. In January 1863, we banned slavery throughout the United States of America. In this way, many slaves ran away from their masters and took refuge in the North. When they arrived, many wanted to join the army to help us win the war. It was impressive. Their fighting spirit infected everyone. I want to enlist with you, Commander. And I, this war must end immediately. However, in just two years there were more than a hundred battles, in which thousands and thousands of soldiers died. We were to build a cemetery for the soldiers who had fought in the war, and we placed it in a town called Gettysburg, in the state of Pennsylvania, where one of the fiercest battles had taken place. On the day when the coffins were brought, there were a lot of people at the cemetery. Relatives, friends. They had all come to say goodbye to their loved ones. They were very sad and scared at the same time. They did not understand why the fighting had to continue and they were afraid that others would die. Then I gave a speech that went down in history. It only took 10 minutes, but it helped to embolden people and avoid surrender. All men are born equal. You are right. This idea is worth fighting for. Even if we are afraid, we must keep fighting until we are all free. Finally, in April 1865, we won the war. It had been long and rough, but it had been worth it. The two armies united and, most importantly, reached an agreement. Slavery was abolished in all American states, without exception. No one could dispose of other people's lives or do what they wanted with it. I had reached my goal. I had freed more than a million and a half people. When I thought about it, my eyes filled with tears and my heart with emotions. I remembered the men, women and children I had seen years ago on the barge and imagined them without chains, at their homes, with their families. Mom, are we free? Yes baby. Lincoln was right. I succeeded. Unfortunately, I could not enjoy the victory for long. There were still bad people who wanted slaves and were angry at the outcome of the war. So angry that, five days after the war ended, a man shot me when I was with my wife at the theater. I did not survive the bullet wound, but my work did, so in the United States several large monuments have been erected to my memory, such as the giant statue near the White House and the portrait carved on Mount Rushmore. Thanks to these tributes, the whole world knows my face. But for me, the most important thing is that people remember my words. All men are born equal. My name is Abraham Lincoln, and this is my story. Ever since I was a child I felt the need to stand up for what was right, and even though it cost me some insults when I angered people who didn't think like me, I never stopped doing it. I fought mostly to end slavery that existed in the United States. I had to face a civil war, but in the end I succeeded. No one can own another person, nor can he direct his life as he pleases, based on the color of his skin, his height, or his age. We are all equal. I fought for slaves. Now it's your turn to fight so that no more injustices happen.